Let's use exercise 8 as an example. Determine products for electrolysis of dilute KOH aqueous by using inert electrode. If we see platinum, we know it's inert, then we can basically ignore this guy. And if I consider exercise 8, what I've done is I split to cation and ion, same thing. So cation is K+, plus, and we have to consider water. Again, consider water, don't consider H+, plus from water. We don't use H+, plus because E value for H+, plus and E value for water is different. And OH-, minus, we also have to consider water. Water can also be discharged. So let's consider each one of them part by part. For cation, which migrates to the cathode, species migrating to the cathode, K+. Plus. We also have to consider water because water is everywhere. So if it is reduction at the cathode, I will find K plus and water on the left-hand side of the half equation. Now this is where, again, we want to be specific. If you are very specific about it, then it's not so confusing. If I know that this guy undergoes reduction, in terms of the thinking process, uh, we decide which side of the half equation we want to find the species first, then we open data booklet, then we go and find. It's better. You know the window shopping, uh, window shopping, we have talked about this previously. Window shopping is you open data booklet, oh let me find all the K pluses that's inside the data booklet. You look left and right. So if you try to do it this do it this way, it's a lot more confusing. Recommendation is you decide which side of the half equation you want to find first, then effectively you're finding half the information is twice as fast. Makes sense, right? And so if I consider reduction, I want K plus on the left hand side of the half equation, I want water on the left-hand side of the half equation. So let's take a look at the data booklet and we try to find them uh, for K plus on the left-hand side. Now K plus on the left-hand side, if we try to search through, again focusing on the left-hand side of the half equation, we are interested in only reduction. So there will only be one species, which is here, K plus plus electron to K minus 2.92 volts. So you can copy this whole thing down. Potassium only appear one time, involving K plus on the left-hand side. Now involving water, this is interesting. Because some of us will be a bit uh, confused with water because in many half equations, we have water as well. When you have water present together with other species, then the purpose of water is actually for balancing oxygen. All right? So maybe let us look at this example, this half equation uh, involving this guy here. O2 plus 2 water to give me 4 OH minus. Now you see water on the left hand side, but water inside this half equation is actually not taking part in the reduction. The species that is reduced is actually O2. The purpose of water is to balance either, is to balance oxygen, usually. Yeah? It's usually used to balance oxygen or to balance uh, hydrogen. So the purpose of water in this case is for balancing purposes. It doesn't take part in the redox reaction. So when water is there, together with another term, usually it's the other term that takes part in the redox reaction, either it is oxidized or it is reduced, if water is together with somebody else. So the half equation that we want, of course it's not this guy, the half equation that we want involving the reduction of water, only water is there and nobody else must be present, then it must be the reduction of water. So we only look out for water and inside the half equation only water is there, nobody else is there. Again focusing on the left hand side, there's only one half equation that we will find which is this guy here, right, involving uh, water plus electron to give me H2 plus 2 OH minus. And there's only one half equation involving this. Only water is on the left-hand side. We will use this for reduction of water to give me H2. So this is the one that we use, minus 0.83 volt. So copy this whole thing down and then exit the data booklet. Again, the idea is decide which side of the half equation we want to find, the species. Open data booklet, find that guy, copy this whole thing down, including the e-value. Again, don't flip the equation, don't change the sign, uh, exit the data booklet. So if you do it this way, in my opinion, it is the most efficient, uh, it's the fastest, and it's a lot less confusing. Don't do window shopping, uh, don't do window shopping. That means especially involving water. Water appears everywhere in the data booklet. If you open data booklet, you say, oh, let me find all the water, and then I decide what I want to use, or oh, we're gonna have a bad time. It's very, very confusing. Decide which side of the half equation that we want to find, if it is reduction, you focus on the left-hand side. If it is oxidation, we focus on the right-hand side. So some of these habits, if you have, then when we do application, it's a lot faster. So try to keep all this in mind. And again, when you look at answer keys in the suggested solution and so on, don't just trust that you will also be able to find the half equation when you are doing the question. Uh, when you look at the solution, I think it's good to physically Take a look at the data booklet 
and you compare the half equation, you have to convince yourself that you are also able to find the same half equation if you are doing the question. Because if we cannot choose the relevant half equation, then most likely we will not be able to get the correct deduction or the correct answer. So actually it hinges on if you refer to the data booklet, can you choose the correct half equation? So let us come back here and we run this through. Involving reduction for K plus, E value is a minus 2.92 volt. Involving reduction of water, E value is a minus 0.83 volt. Of course, if I compare reduction, if two species want to be reduced, the one with the more positive E value more likely reduce. So water has a more positive E value, more likely reduce. So water is discharged or reduced at the cathode. So if I know that this is reduction, then basically we just copy this whole equation down involving water and then just write this in the forward direction. Full arrow. Eh? This one has to be a full arrow. So effectively, we are writing down the reduction of water to give me H2 plus 2 OH minus. Very, very simple. Now, you notice at secondary level, what we say is, we say that OK plus is stable. You'll never be discharged. Water will be discharged. So you notice it is true. Eh? The reason why K plus is stable because it has a very, very negative E value. It is very, very difficult for me to reduce K plus. Actually, virtually not possible in the presence of water. But instead of memorizing, we compare E value and we will have the same conclusion. So if you still have some impression involving the species that are stable, such as like K plus, Na plus, and so on, then I think it is still useful. We can still make use of that to verify the answer. So we just modify the answer. Instead of saying that K plus is stable, we compare E value, but the outcome is exactly the same. Next thing, involving A node. Now species migrating to the A node, we will have to consider OH minus, and we will have to consider water. Now, if it is oxidation, we have to look out for species on the right hand side of the half equation. Find OH minus on the right hand side, find water on the right hand side. Now, before we do that, you notice the issue with OH minus is the same as that with water. Sometimes OH minus is present together with some other species to set the medium. Sometimes it's used again to balance oxygen or to balance hydrogen or to show that this is in alkaline medium. So for species like OH minus, H plus, and water, because we use it for balancing purposes, balance H, balance hydrogen, balance oxygen, or set the medium, acidic medium or alkaline medium, we also use it for all these other purposes. So therefore, if I want the oxidation of OH minus, then I want the half equation where only OH minus is there, nobody else is there. So it must be involving the oxidation for OH minus. Nobody else is there, so only OH minus can be oxidized. So what we want is, we want the half equation involving OH minus on the right hand side. Only OH minus is there, nobody else is there. So only OH minus can undergo oxidation. Same for water, same for water. And let us try to find this. Now it's under the section involving oxygen. So let's take a look at that. The species or the half equation where there's only OH minus on the right hand side. Uh, interestingly, we have two of them. Uh. This one is the yellow OH minus. This is the pink OH minus. Now I have two OH minus that can be oxidized, which is the half equation that we should choose. Now, usually my suggestion is we don't look at the E value. Rather, we look at the products that is being formed. And if there's a difference in the oxidation state of the product, we see which one is more stable. So the guy would be more likely for recommendation will be that we see which one has a more stable oxidation state and the guy will be more likely formed. So if I consider the yellow OH minus, OH minus to HO2 minus, oxidation state for oxygen here, this is a minus one. Remember this is my peroxide and minus one is not a common oxidation state for OH minus, it's not a stable oxidation state for oxygen. Then involving your pink OH minus, this will be oxidized to O2, which is element, oxidation state zero. So if we consider the common oxidation states for oxygen, usually it's zero if it is an element or it is a minus two, usually it's a zero or minus two. We see this a lot more often. Minus one oxidation state involving oxygen is not common. In fact, the only example we can think of is uh, hydrogen peroxide, where oxidation state for oxygen is a minus one. We can hardly think of another example involving oxygen where it has a minus one oxidation state. Now, how common that oxidation state is is related to the stability. The more stable the oxidation state, the more common it will be. Correct? Because, because if it is more stable, if it is an oxidation state that that element likes, and we will find this 
a lot more common because it likes to form in. We will see this in a lot of examples. So if I compare, let's say, minus one oxidation state for oxygen versus, versus minus two oxidation state for oxygen. Oxygen likes a minus two oxidation state. That's why in most of the compounds that we find involving oxygen, oxidation state for oxygen is always a minus two. It likes it so much more than minus one oxidation state. So there's a relationship between how common you see the oxidation state is related to the stability. The more common this is, it means that the element likes the oxidation state because it's more stable, correct? So we can actually make use of that. If we consider two species that can take part in oxidation reduction and the product has a different oxidation state, so you consider which one is the more common oxidation state, which also suggests it is more stable. So if I consider minus one versus zero oxidation state, this zero oxidation state is better. So I'll choose this, huh? this plus 0 0.40 volt. So there is a system or there's a method for us to deduce which is a better choice. Usually again, recommendation is we don't look at E value, we compare the stability of the product. So recommendation, uh, we do that. So that's involving uh, OH minus. We still have to find water, correct? So involving OH minus, maybe I can show this to you here first. Involving OH minus, this is the one that we're copying down your O2 plus two water plus four electron to give me four OH minus, E value it is a plus uh, 0.40 volt. Now we have to find water as well. So let us go back to the data booklet and we try to find the half equations involving water. Now water is also here, only have water on the right hand side of the half equation, nobody else, so that only water can undergo oxidation. So we will have two choices, your blue water and your green water. So involving blue water, green water, which is the one that we choose. Again, we don't look at E value, we look at stability of the product that is being formed. So the blue water oxidized to hydrogen peroxide, oxidation state for oxygen is a minus one. We actually already roughly know this is not a good choice huh? because minus one oxidation state, not common, not stable. Then the green water, water oxidized to O2. So this one, zero oxidation state, it is a lot more common. Oxygen either zero or minus two most of the time. So this 1.23 volt, it is a much better choice, correct? Even if we have different options, we have a system and we roughly know how to decide which is the half equation that we want to use. So I'll again copy this entire thing down, 1.23 volt and exit the data booklet. So try to pick this idea up because we will get to apply this to our other instances, all right? We will talk about this along the way. These are the two half equations that we are expected to have. The oxidation of OH minus E value, it is a plus 0.40 volt. Oxidation of water E value, it is a plus 1.23. So comparing oxidation, more negative, more likely oxidized. So OH minus has a more negative E value, more likely oxidized. Then this will be the species that is discharged. OH minus will be discharged. When we consider oxidation, it's very simple. Just copy this whole thing. Uh, and then we just write this in the reverse direction. Make sure this is a full arrow. And basically we are done species that is oxidized, OH minus to O2 plus water. Products form involving your species huh? for electrolysis of KOH diluted will be hydrogen gas and O2 gas.